What's going on guys? I'm Colin to tell you how and today we're going to be going over the basics of good quality video. So lights, camera, editing. Let's take a look. Alright, so a good quality video is something that we all want, although many of the very basic things are overlooked. And when I said this, I was being serious. Lights, camera, editing. Those are going to be the three main things, the three determining factors in whether you have a good quality video or not. Now if you ask me, I would say that the most important thing out of all of these is obviously going to be number one, the lighting, and number two, the camera. Now that might surprise you a little bit. The camera isn't all as important as you think. Now obviously you're going to want a decent camera, but if you have a good camera, like me, I have a Nikon D3100, it's a DSLR, runs fairly expensive, and that doesn't mean that I'm going to get great video. If I don't light it up properly and I don't edit it properly, it's not going to look as good as it could. Now obviously you guys cannot all go out and get the best of the best cameras, and that, you know, that makes sense. If I had my choice, I would have an awesome camera, and, and it's quite frankly, I love the camera that I have, but it could be better, doesn't mean that it's not good, but it could be better. And at one point, I had to deal with an Insignia, I had to deal with a Samsung, I had to deal with an Insignia again, I even had to deal with a little point and shoot one time to film with. So, I've been there, I've done that, and you know, now that I've got this Nikon, I am trying to use it to the fullest extent. So you say, well I have good lighting, you know, I have a window, I have a light, doesn't that mean I have good lighting? No. Let's take a look at how you might properly want to set up your lighting. While lighting your video is important, I understand that it can also be very pricey. So I'm going to show you how to do it on a very small budget. Now get ready for this because this is a lot of information to take in. Whenever I light my videos, I generally use these. A window? and a cheap reflector light that I got from Walmart for about six dollars. Now I know it's a lot, you know, bear with me. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys. But seriously, for these things, you can have fairly good lighting on your video. Obviously you're gonna wanna go ahead and use whatever lighting you have in your environment to your advantage. If you're outside and it's overcast, then you probably won't need to use anything other than the sun, of course. But if you're inside a window, being placed near a window and having a light on the other side of your face so that kind of balances out that light is a really good option. Another thing with these little reflector lights is this one has a clip on it. This allows me to be able to place it on any kind of object that I'm filming around and it makes it to where I can kind of hang it and put it in the right position so it's not very difficult to use. Overhead lights work well also, but my overhead lights in my room are not that great, so I just tend to use this reflector light, maybe a lamp, and definitely the window. Alright guys, now that we've got the lighting down, you're going to want to head on over to your editor. I'll meet you there. Okay, now that we have officially moved on to the editing and producing portion of this film, let me just go on ahead and start off by saying that you can use pretty much any editor that you would like. Any basic editor is going to work that means Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere Elements, Sony Vegas, maybe even Windows Movie Maker. I don't know. And I know that iMovie will work. But what I'm going to be, be using is Sony Vegas Pro 10. Uh, <laughs> weird face for the win. And I just have uh, this footage that you just watched. Isn't that weird? I'm recording the footage that you're watching while we're producing it and you're watching it on YouTube. Just kidding, that didn't make much sense. But what I'm going to do here is just the point that I want to get across is color correction. And that's basically what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to show you the basic color corrector that I'll be using. And uh, whenever it decides to come up. Oddly enough, the name of the plugin on Sony Vegas is called Sony Color Corrector. Okay, it might be a little bit mind boggling for you. I'm just joking. But some of the presets on here are actually pretty nice. For instance, Studio to Computer RGB. I like it a little bit. Yes. 
but as you can see what we're gonna do here is just basically play with the saturation the gamma and you get what you want um, or I'm sorry you play with it until you get what you want and that's basically what's gonna help you achieve a better looking film uh, make it better quality and before we close out completely there's one more thing that's extremely important All right, before you save it or you share it or you render it, whatever, depending on which program you're in, make sure that the video settings are according to the camera that you're recording on. That's kind of a little bit of a tongue twister. And make sure that it looks good. For instance, the camera that I record with, I have it set to record in 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second, or 29.97 to be exact. But as you can see, my settings here match. A lot of cameras record in 720 by 480 and they don't record at 30 frames per second. In that case, you would want to bump it down to whatever your camera records in. And if you don't know this, I know you can look it up online. Um, and the reason why I'm stressing this so much is because it is very important and it's something that you need to know because if you export in something different than what you imported in, it looks totally just weird okay like if yeah if I export it in 60 frames per second thinking that it's gonna make my video look a little sharper no it just makes it look a little glitchy and laggy it doesn't work so basically you want to export um, in what you imported in it's kind of uh, it goes hand in hand one more thing if you have the option depending on which editor you use most of them are gonna allow you to choose which format you want to save it in I actually go with Windows Media Video uh, most of the time. AVI is good, but it's extremely large and it, and it kind of takes forever to upload to YouTube, so I don't tend to use that. And MPEG is good too. That's just some quick tips for you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you want more of these videos. We make them all the time. We make reviews as well regarding new technology products. So once again guys, I am Colin will tell you how. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys have a great day. Peace out.